Hello, guys. So, five quick questions for you about pharmacology with answers. Let's review this because this is really important. And from now on, we're going to do always those five questions about a specific topic for you guys to train with answers, just for you to quickly train without wasting your time of your day. So let's go uh, with this question first. Which of the following represents a contraindication for corticosteroids? Okay, for steroids, prednisolone, for example. Go back to our video about this. We have uh, two videos about pharmacology, very important. I will make the link available here on the top right corner of this screen. Well, let's review all the alternatives here. So we have asthma. Well, asthma is absolutely an indication for steroids because you cannot use NSAIDs. Don't forget the NSAIDs, uh, they are actually bad for asthma, especially naproxen. Well, ibuprofen is a little bit better. We are talking about this on, on our lecture about pain management. But anyway, corticosteroids is usually better for patients with asthma. You don't want to, you know, to, to make this worse for the patient. So it's not letter A, of course. TMJ pain is also an indication for steroids. Absolutely an indication for steroids. So not uh, letter B uh, either. Then we have aftos ulcer. Well, aftos ulcer can be treated with steroids. You can take the steroids or even topic steroids. Those are, of course, not topic for the skin, for the mucosa. Uh, we call aura base, so it depends on the culture that you are. Uh, you can also treat the symptoms with, with uh, those uh, uh, creams with the steroids. So steroids is an indication also for aftas or aftos ulcers. So absolutely not. The correct answer here, the contraindication is infections. Fungal infections, viral infections, or bacterial infections, they are a contraindication for corticosteroids. That's why the correct answer here is the letter D, okay, herpes. This is the contraindication. Gastric ulcers are also contraindication, and then patients with congestive heart failure. So this history, then they, this is also contraindication for corticosteroids, all right? So that's a very nice question for you guys to learn, even for your clinical career. Let's go for question number two now. And there you have it. What does PRN mean in a prescription? So those abbreviations you need, especially in the English language countries, you should know this. For other language countries, maybe it's a little bit different, but uh, usually there are abbreviations as well. So you should always make sure you know the abbreviations for your prescriptions. So in this case here, PRN. So what PRN means? And of course it means letter B, as needed. Okay, as needed. That's the correct answer. Immediately is STAT. STAT, that's the abbreviation for immediately. Then twice a day, of course you guys know it's BID, B of ball, BID. And then four times a day it is QID, QID. TID would be the abbreviation for three times a day. Just revealing this for you guys, if you guys are about to do a prescription or if you guys are studying pharmacology. Question number three here, and this is uh, very important. We have the question meaning, which has the weakest potential to treat acute inflammation? Then we have aspirin, naproxen, acetaminophen, and then ibuprofen. Those are the four options that, uh, that we have here. And uh, you can pause the video if you want, of course, to, to try this. But the correct answer here is uh, Tylenol, so uh, acetaminophen. So, so paracetamol is basically the one with the weakest potential to treat acute inflammation. All right, so don't forget about this because this is uh, really important. That's because of the answer of uh, local prostaglandin. So it's really important that you guys know uh, the difference between those four uh, medicines here. So let's go for the next question. And the next question is here. The most common complication in chemotherapy cases are, so which is the correct answer here? So the correct answer is that when the hair is falling for the patient, the patient is losing hair and that's alopecia, of course, right? Glaucoma, renal failure and peripheral neuropathy are not complications uh, or common complications in chemotherapy cases. Uh, don't forget that chemotherapy is uh, teratogenic, so uh, should avoid should be avoided in pregnant women. And methotrexate can cause oral uh, ulcerations, okay, so ulcerations in the oral tissues. That's important. And then there is the risk of osteonecrosis because of the chemotherapy. So 
This is also something that you, you can need to know before applying, before doing an extraction, for example, for the patients. Okay. So now this is also a very important question, which is an example of a broad spectrum antibiotic? Uh, ampicillin, amoxicillin and augmentin, so uh, amoxicillin and augmentin are examples of penicillin and penicillins, they are not broad spectrum antibiotic and not even ampicillin. So the answer is cephalosporins. The, the, those are the broad spectrum um, antibi antibiotics and they are often used to treat severe uh, staphylococcal infections such as endocarditis, for example. So, so that's why they are broad spectrum antibiotics. So the correct answer here is the letter D. All right. So this uh, use this to complement your studies and see you guys in the next videos.